Hey guys, it's Ryan here again, and in this video I want to share with you how I landed a job that pays me $650 a day, is 100% remote, and by following the same steps that I took, how you can land one too. So I know what you're thinking, and it may come as a shock to some of you that the guy that is building all these passive income streams and has a goal to become financially free by the end of the year actually has a job. Well, truth be told, at the beginning of when I started making videos for this channel, I actually didn't have a job for about two months, which is why I was able to put out content much more consistently and frequently. But I quickly realized that this just wasn't sustainable for me at the moment. So call me a sellout if you may, but I needed a job in order to keep the lights on and to continue funding these passive income endeavors. With that being said, I am going to commit to putting a video out every two weeks from now on to the best of my abilities. and. I, I hope I don't regret saying this, but I'm gonna commit to it. What I found with this new job is that there are some pretty great jobs out there that do provide you with flexibility in your life and do pay you what you deserve to be paid. Is it absolutely perfect? No, no job ever will be. But it's as pretty close to perfect as I've found. Why it's perfect for me at least is it because it allows me to do work during the day that I actually enjoy and doesn't burn me out. And when work is over, I'm able to actually have time and energy to work on my passion projects such as YouTube or any other passive income streams that I'm building. And anyone that's building a passive income stream or business will quickly realize that without money saved or money coming in, life will catch up to you pretty quickly and you'll need to find some sort of stream of income to help fund these endeavors. Let's take YouTube automation for example. I'm spending about a thousand dollars a month in order to create videos for that channel and no money's coming in quite yet. And if we look at my Airbnb property, you know, it's fortunately able to generate about $900 a month in profit, but it took about $40,000 of my cold hard savings in order to purchase the property and furnish it. So the million dollar question, where do you get the funds to pay for these things? And there's really two answers to this. You either have rich parents or you work hard and you generate income from a job that pays you what you deserve. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. And just for reference, in case anyone's wondering, I don't have a college degree. I simply just worked hard on my craft, which is sales. I networked with the right people and I kept my eyes on the lookout for new opportunities to get me where I am today. So with all that out of the way, let's get down to business. First off, you'll need to learn a skill that companies want and need to hire for. For me personally, as I mentioned before, I chose sales and that's because companies always need to hire new salespeople. Plus, there's a low barrier to entry, meaning that it's not that hard to find a job that pays you well in this industry. Additionally, I liked the idea of making commission and earning more based on the amount of hard work that I'm putting into my job every day. I ended up falling into sales because I started a job with a solar company doing door-to-door -door sales when I was 20 years old and quickly realized that I was pretty dang good at it. During my first year, and again with no college degree, I was able to make $65,000. Now with how the solar industry is structured, you actually make much more money than I used to back in the day. Most companies will pay between $3,000 and $10,000 per sale. It's a great way to learn sales while also making potentially life-changing money doing it. And if that's something that you're interested in and can get past the fact that you'd be doing direct sales via door-to-door, -door, then feel free to schedule a call using the link in the description. I have a few friends that run solar companies and I'd be happy to get you in touch with the right people if there's a good fit. But this doesn't mean that you need to learn sales. There are plenty of other skill sets that are out there that would allow you to get hired with no college education and still make great money doing it. For example, there's a program Google has called Grow with Google, which allows you to take cost-effective courses and earn a certificate at the end of the course in high growth fields such as project management, IT support, data analytics, digital marketing. And I actually have experience with this course. I was enrolled in the data analytics course prior to accepting my latest job offer. And overall, I had a really great experience with it. It was easy to follow, the structure was great, and the best part is Google has a track record of helping people get jobs in the industry that they get a certificate for. So if you're not sure where to take your career, but you know that you need to learn a skill set that companies need to hire for, this is a great place to start and it provides you with something that you can at least put on your resume, which leads me to my next point, and that's building the perfect resume. I've done a ton of interviewing over the years and 
because of this, I've had many conversations with recruiters and hiring managers, and some of which were actually nice enough to help me with my resume and build it in a way that helps it stand out from the crowd. On top of this, I've also been in the shoes of a hiring manager. So I have a pretty clear understanding of what companies are looking for and how you can build the perfect resume. So the general rule of thumb when writing a resume, at least here in the States, is you want to keep it all on one page. And if we look at it from the hiring manager's perspective, you know, they're getting hundreds of applications sometimes on these job listings. And the last thing that they're gonna want to do is to have to look through your five page essay on your job history, which sometimes is filled with non-relevant information and just information that doesn't apply to the job listing itself. You need to keep your resume clear and concise. Cut out all the fluff and the garbage and shorten it down to one page. Hiring managers appreciate it. It helps you stand out from the crowd and establish you as a professional that knows what they're doing. And instead of just telling you about it, I'm gonna show you a copy of my resume right now. So I've blurred out some of the information on here for obvious reasons, such as my contact details, my address, and names of the jobs that I've worked for in the past for obvious reasons. But what I want to demonstrate here is an example of how your resume should be laid out. You have your name, your address, and your contact details at the very top of the page. Then right below that, you have your professional experience, starting with your most recent professional experience at the top of the page. And then in descending order, you go down to your least recent experience. And for me, I actually have more relevant work experience that I could put on the resume, but I've cut it out so that I can keep everything on my resume on a single page. Then at the bottom of the page, I have my top skills listed. And if you have certificates that you wanna show off, then this would be a great place to place your certificates. But depending on how much relevant work experience you have, say you have no job history and you wanna break into coding, or you wanna break into sales, for example, then you may wanna place your certificates at the very top right where professional experience would be and move your professional experience down. That way it highlights your relevant training and history to the job. The last thing I wanna mention about resumes is that you need to structure your resume toward the position that you're applying for. So if you're applying for sales roles, for example, you first need to narrow down the type of role that you're looking for that fits well for your experience level and the type of job that you're looking for. If you're looking to get into tech sales, then you're likely going to look for sales development or business development roles. And if you're looking to get into data analytics, then you're likely going to look for a data analyst role. An account executive role would be too senior for you in sales, if you're just breaking into the industry, and a data scientist role would be too senior for you if you're just breaking into the data analytics industry. Does that make sense? Once you've identified the exact role that's a good fit for you and your experience level, you then need to make sure that each point on your resume is geared towards that type of role. For me, for example, since I'm a salesperson, each point on my resume is highlighting achievements I've had in my sales experience, whether it was my personal sales numbers, teams I've managed, or just overall improvements I've made in the company. Every point I'm making on my resume has the goal of establishing me as an experienced salesperson that's quick on his feet, scrappy, and hungry to make sales. And if you're applying for different types of roles, that's totally okay, there's nothing wrong with that. You just will want to have a different type of resume that's geared toward each of the different roles that you're applying for. And even if you think you don't have relevant work experience that applies to the role you wanna apply for, that's usually okay. You know, again, you just wanna find a role that is most likely to hire someone with not a ton of experience and be able to structure your previous experiences in a way that make it compelling for a hiring manager to wanna to talk to you. For example, you know, if you wanted to get into sales, but you have zero sales experience, then structure your resume in a way that shows off your sales abilities. Whether, you know, let's say you waited tables, you were a server, or you worked a front desk, then you can still highlight how you talk to customers, that you upsold them on new items, or you were able to have a hundred conversations a day, you know, because people were calling into the front desk all day. And you were able to talk through hard situations and diffuse hard situations. Those are all great qualities of a salesperson and something that, if highlighted correctly, would most likely get you in front of the right person within the company. I'm realizing that this video is 
gonna be way more than 10 minutes now, but hopefully you guys are getting a ton of value out of this so far. And if you are and you like the video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And uh, I'm not, I haven't even gotten to the best point yet, which is the best websites to apply to and how to properly apply through them to get you the best results. But before we get to that last point, I do have one more point I want to go over with you guys, and that is how to interview properly. Now, when it comes to becoming a good interviewer, it simply takes practice. There's no real shortcut around this. At the end of the day, it is a skill, and you don't build up skills without putting in the work to get better. My recommendation is get some practice runs in on your interviewing skills before you actually have an interview. Last thing you want to do is hop on with the recruiter or the hiring manager and just completely flop and blow an opportunity when you could have saved it just by having a couple practice runs with your family, friends, roommates, whoever you have around you. When you're interviewing, you're effectively doing sales, but instead of selling a product or service, you're simply selling yourself. And something I've found after hundreds of interviews, the first question that you're typically gonna get is, so, Tell me a little bit more about your background. And when this question comes up, you need to have a story that you've practiced that highlights everything on your resume and applies exactly to the role that you've applied for. If you can nail this, you will almost guarantee that you move on to at least the next round of the interview process. Some other rapid fire tricks I like to follow when interviewing are do a little bit of research on the person that you're gonna interview with. I like to do this through LinkedIn and get to understand their work history, have they been a manager for long? Are they you know, high up in sales? Who is this person? Where are they based out of? And it gives you a little bit more to talk to them about when you're actually on the call with them. Now, when the interview starts, I always like to take time to ask them questions about how their day is going, where they're from, who are they as a person? And the reason that I like to do this is because most people that are having interviews with them are not having this type of conversation. They're having just a more transactional conversation, talking about their job history, and that's basically it. So the more human-to-human -human conversation you can have with the hiring manager, the more you're gonna stand out and the more they're gonna like you as a person and want to move you on to that at least the next round. Lastly, I would always recommend to come up with some good hard-hitting questions to go over with the interviewer at the end of your interview. If you get to the point where they ask you, hey, do you have any questions for me and you don't have anything to say, it's gonna look like a negative in their eyes. They're gonna think you're not engaged or you don't want the job. So come up with a good hard hitting question that makes them think, gets them engaged and allows you to have a meaningful conversation. I typically will ask something like, so what do you foresee as the biggest challenge to overcome in the next 12 months? All right, and like I mentioned, I've saved the best point for last and that is the best website for you to apply for jobs on and how to apply. This is actually the website I used to find my most recent job that pays me $650 a day. And overall, I've had a lot of success just scheduling interviews on over the last couple months. And that website is called AngelList. AngelList is a website where startups, primarily in the tech space, go to hire talent. You'll first need to go there and create your profile, but once that's done, this is where the fun begins. Why I like working for startups is because they're fun. You know, there's a new thing that you're doing every single day. It's challenging, it's exciting. There's a ton of opportunity to grow and move up in the company very quickly. Not to mention, you oftentimes get equity in these companies, which can pay off huge if the company ever decides to sell or go public on the stock market. They're also typically, a lot of the times, a lot easier to get a job with when compared to a large corporation like Facebook, Google, or Amazon. What AngelList allows you to do is use filters to narrow down exactly the type of job you're looking for from income level to job title to even if you want to work remote or in a specific city. Here are the job titles I chose. Sales, marketing, sales development rep, business development rep, account executive, and sales manager. For salary, I chose between 120,000 US and 200,000 US. I chose remote only positions. You'll then be greeted by thousands of results, which will be sorted by recommended, but you'll likely want to change it to sorted by most recent. Once you apply for a job, you'll be given the opportunity to write a note to the hiring manager. And you need to take advantage of writing a note to the hiring manager. This is really what separates AngelList from any other recruiting platform I've seen. What I'd recommend is writing a compelling paragraph or two that explains your relevant work history and how it applies perfectly for this role. Then once you have that typed up, you can use it as a template and copy and paste it for every other 
role that you're applying for. You may need to modify it slightly from time to time depending on the role that you're applying for and what it calls for, but using this template will save you a ton of time. You won't have to write it out every single time and it, again, will help you stand out from the crowd. Thanks to these tips that I outlined in this video, I was able to schedule 14 interviews with AngelList and on the 13th interview, I had a single interview with the company and was offered the job the very next day. I'm now making more money than I ever have. I have a ton of freedom and flexibility thanks to fully remote work and that provides me the time and the energy really to work on these side hustles. It's just the perfect fit for what I need. I hope that by following these steps, you're able to find a similar role that meets everything you're looking for. Just know that it does take time. It took me almost two months to find this job. And all you can really do is just stay patient, keep making improvements on your interview process and stay confident that you're going to find the job. It's just going to take a little bit of time. And that's it for now, everyone. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe. And I will see you again in two weeks.